Hi and welcome to my video on how to set up a Sega Mega Drive development environment with the SGDK. So let's get started. Right, to begin with we need to download the SGDK from Steph's GitHub site, which can be found at the following address up here. I'll post it in the description. Then we need to download Codeblocks, which is going to be our ID for actually doing any development. Once we have both, we need to extract the SGDK to the root of our um, PC. So you can put that in any folder you want. I generally put it in a folder called SGDK. So what you may notice is that there's a sample folder for some demo sort of projects that you can look at. And there's also um, Visual Studio support, but I won't be covering that in this video. So now we need to set up some environment variables. So to do this in Windows 10, we go to this PC and right click properties and then advanced system settings and then environment variables. We have this section down here where we can add environment variables. So I need to put two variables in here. I need to put one called GDK, which uses a Unix based address. So there we go. So C colon forward slash S GDK. And then a Windows based one. So we do GDK underscore win. And then the same again, but using a backslash. So now we have that done, we need to install code blocks, which doesn't take very long at all. So now in code blocks, we need to set up the compiler. So if we go to settings compiler, we get these options. So we're going to make a copy of the GNU GCC compiler. This will be our base. So Sega, Genesis, or Mega Drive, depending on what you want to call it, compiler. Then click OK. So we need to make some alterations to the tool chain to make this work. So for, for starters, we need to change the point of address. So that's going to be obviously the uh, SGDK folder on the root of C. Uh, the C compiler is just going to be gcc.exe. A C++ compiler, again, is going to be gcc.exe. And then we have the linker for dynamic libs, which again, is going to be gcc.exe. And then we have to type something slightly different for the static libs. libs. So it's gdb.exe. And then we have the resource, which is bintoc.exe. And then make program, which is make.exe. So once we've done that, we have the compiler set up within code blocks. So we're ready to roll, really. So we're going to set up a new project for our first Mega Drive ROM program, whatever that may be. So we open an empty project and then go through the wizards. So first of all, we need to give it a title. So I'm going to give this Matthias Bias Demo. So when you start out, there'll be a need to change the compiler to the Genesis compiler. And also you'll need to untick debug because this default will be ticked. And then we need to change the release configuration so it says default and both the output paths are output backslash. And then we click finish. So we need to do a couple more tweaks to the properties of the project. So if you right click on the project itself and click properties, we'll come into here. So we need to change the path to where the make file is because we're using a custom make file. So again, it's pointing it at the directory C SGDK forward slash or backslash backslash makefile dot gen. And we're also going to need to go to the project build options. And we're going to need to change that to default. Click OK. So now we're all done. 
in terms of the settings and we can build and you can see we can build an empty ROM. Apart from there's an error because there isn't actually a main C file at the moment. So our next job is to create a C file that we're going to put all our code in for this project. So if I click OK and make something called main.c. So this is where all the C code for our project ROM file is going to go. So I'm going to cut and paste a template of a piece of C code that I've already written. So yep, so we, as you can see, this is, I'm going to give you a quick explanation of this. So to do anything with the VDP, we need to disable the interrupts. So that's the first thing we basically do. And then I set the screen width to the typical 320 of high res mode. Then I set the text palette color to palette zero. Then I draw an image to the screen on plane A. So I'm basically putting a logo to the screen and I set the logo's palette to palette one. And then I re-enable the interrupts. And then this while loop down the bottom here, I'm simply drawing text to the screen. So subscribe for more 16-bit Sega bit dev. So I'm gonna need some resource files if so I'm gonna put that logo on screen. So on my desktop, I already have a folder called res. So I'm copying that over to my project folder. And in res folder, we basically have a logo.png. So I need to add that folder to my project. So basically we've got this resource, so GFX res file, which contains all of the resource data. So as you can see, I've got the logo in there declared as logo. So now we can compile this together. And we've built the ROM. And I can now open that in Fusion, fingers crossed, if I can find the directory. Somewhere. There we go, I've just gone past it. Darn it. Uh, there we go, not OSBS demo. So in the output folder we declared earlier is where the ROM is. So we can just run this ROM. And voila, there you go. Thanks for watching my video. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments.